Hi everybody. Today I want to do a quick demo on bow drills. I've been outsourcing materials in my local woodland. I've found some spruce and I've found some dead standing hazel. We're going to go through the components that make up a bow drill set and I'm going to show you how to make one as well. The different components of a bow drill kit is made up by a hearth board. This will be the bottom. Then you need a spindle, blunt on one end, pointy on the other. This is to create a lot of friction so that you can make your ember and you can create heat. This is pointy because it needs to create less friction on the top of your bearing block. As a bearing block, you can use a piece of wood with an indentation made into it to hold the spindle in place. You can use a deer talus, which is, it has a very nice indent. The reason to use something like this is it creates a lot less friction than a piece of wood does. You could also use something custom like this. It's, just, it's a stone necklace made from a guy on Instagram called Where's the Smoke? Rich Man. The next thing you're gonna need is some sort of an ember catcher. Because when you create your ember, you don't want it being on the ground because the ground is oftentimes wet and you can't pick it up. An ember catcher could be a little piece of wood. It could be a piece of birch bark. Or it could be something man-made like this piece of steel or multi-card striker as my good bro Bushcraft Kelso calls it. Now you can also use this to strike flint if you want to, but it's a genius little ember catcher as well, or a scraper if you need it. Next thing and last thing, you're gonna need a bow. I like my bow to be a little bit curvy. I like it to have a two branch end because then I can just hook on my string and tie it off to this. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna split down your piece of spruce. I have a little bit of a wet side here. It was dead standing, but the water came down this way. So I'm gonna split it so I remove the wet piece of wood. leaving me just the drier piece. So one way to see if this is a good wood for bow drilling or not, it doesn't have a lot of uh, resin in it, so it's very white in color. The other thing you can do is you need to be able to make a decent mark with your thumbnail. So when you drive that into it, you know it's soft enough to be good for a bow drill kit. Then I plane off this underside so it's gonna stay level with the ground that'll about do it next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut down a little bit into it leaving about an uh, index finger of thickness on the bottom. I'm then gonna baton again. Leaving just a small step. The reason I do this is if I need to carry this with me somewhere, I'll always have a dry, another dry piece of wood for my hearth board. Next thing you want to do is you want to find a straight piece of the hazel. I have a straight piece here. It's a bit about thumb size thick. And we'll just cut this into size.
this piece I also want about underarm length. One end of this is going to go into my bearing block, so the top. I carve this quite steep. The other end is going to go into my hearth board. I carved this quite plain. Now we've roughly carved out our components, two of our components for the bow drill. So the spindle and the hearth board. Next thing we need to do is just remove the excess bark on this. The reason we do this is that the bark oftentimes is more slippery than the wood itself and we don't want our spindle slipping now we've removed the bark from our spindle next thing we need to do is to marry the two together so for the placement of my spindle in the half board I want it to be about a finger from the edge of the spindle to the edge of the board. The reason for this is I have to create a notch. I don't want it to be too far out towards the end and I want a little bit of room to the step. Marking that spot, I put in my knife, I twist it around and I carve off some of the excess to create a little divot. We need to ready our bow because I have a two prong here. I simply have a loop in the end of my cordage. I just attach it to. I go down to where my handle part is. I loop it around. And I catch the piece of string. This needs to be quite tight. I do it the other way around again. And then I simply wrap the excess cordage around the handle of my bow. There we go. Now we need to burn in the hole so we know how big the spindle is and how far in we have to make our notch. I'm just going to move the knife away. Safety first. Now this is easily done, more easily done sitting down, but I'll try to do this standing for demonstration purposes. I want to put my spindle in my bow. I'm going to put it on the inside of the string, then locking the bow in place, I'm going to wrap my spindle. That kink sound is very good, it means you have a very tight grip on your spindle and it's going to make bowing easier. Now the reason I put it on the inside and then twisted is that now my spindle is on the outside of the string. If you do this the other way around and the spindle is on the inside, you can catch your bow and create unnecessary friction. So, having this ready, I'm just going to grab 
my bearing block. I'm gonna start bowing. Now, because of this pre-drilling, this now fits into this. We've already created a little bit of dust, never mind. Now we need to make the notch that goes into our bow, bow drill kit. So time to get the knife again. I'm gonna remove a little bit of this edge create a nice 90 degree and then they're gonna take my saw this is the easiest way of doing it you can also just carve this out if you want I'm then gonna cut down almost to the center of my hole And I'm going to carve out the notch. So if you can imagine making a pizza slice in this direction and a pizza slice in this direction. Halfway there. And you can now see the triangle shape here. It goes all the way, almost all the way to the center. If we turn this around, we also have a triangle going this way. This is to catch more air, so it, the, the dust that we create will easily ignite. Now, we're just about ready to bow drill. So I have my bow my spindle, my hearth board, my ember catcher, my bearing block, and the last thing we need is a burst nest. Something very fine, highly flammable, that easily catches the ember and can turn it into flame. I'll load the bow with my spindle. I place my blunt end on the half board. Pointy end up goes in the bearing block. I rest my arm against my leg so I don't need to support as much. And we're ready to go. You wanna start out by not putting too much pressure and just lightly moving the bone. A good thing to remember is to use the whole length of the bow. This will make things easier for you. Now we've started to see smoke and we've started to, to create a little bit of dust now I'm gonna apply a bit more pressure and I'm gonna up the speed a little bit
gonna gently waft it a little bit to make sure that the ember is alive. So it's still smoking right now. I'm gonna tap lightly to make sure the ember isn't stuck to the hearth board. Add the last bit of dust. And a great thing about this, if it's not very windy or raining, and you've created a good dust pile and caught the ember, this little thing will last for a long time. So when you've created the ember, you're not in a rush to do anything. It's always a good idea to have the bird's nest in hand, all ready, ready. But an ember of that size will go on for 10 minutes maybe. So no rush, catch your breath. Make sure you don't screw this up right now, because then you have to do it all again. My bird's nest, I've made it a little a little place for my ember. I'm gonna lift it up. I'm gonna place it on top and gently put it down into the burst mist. Right now, I wanna cuddle it a little bit and I want to add some air. Now the reason I'm not blowing into this is because my breath contains a lot of moisture that moisture can kill a small limber. So I'm gonna establish it first before I start blowing. When your bird's nest starts to create a decent amount of smoke, you loosen the grip a little bit and you blow upwards. There we go fire the caveman way i hope you enjoyed this video and let me know what you think of it i hope it's useful it's a good feeling